Genius back with you once again, and oh my goodness, were Obama's minions out there in the media this weekend or what? Woo, doggies. I mean, David Axelrod, Howard Dean, John Kerry, and all the rest of the sycophants, they were all out there on all of the Sunday morning shows and the, the, the newspapers and anybody that had a microphone open or a tape recorder on. My God, they went to them and they started in with this garbage about the Tea Party being the reason that the Standards & Poor Company, or the firm there, uh, lowered the AAA credit rating of the United States. Oh, it's our fault. Yeah, it's our fault. My God, how ridiculous. It's a shame that some people actually believe it. I mean, but yet there they were, Axelrod and all the rest of them, out there trumpeting this garbage. And, of course, the, the media was out there going, oh, yep, 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 yes, sir, oh, yep, yep, say, say some more, you know. Just, uh, just egging him on. It's a completely ridiculous idea. And I want you to think about something. I want to illustrate for you how ridiculous this idea is that uh, somehow this standard and poor lowering the American credit rating is a part of the fault of the Tea Party. Setting aside for a moment uh, some of the horrible judgments that standards and poor have made in the past. Remember, they were at one time giving AAA credit ratings to mortgage-backed securities that... Uh, that vaunted, that vaunted result of the Barney Frank uh, legislation. Anyway, uh, so Standards & Poor does not have the world's best track record when it comes to this stuff anyway. However, everybody in Washington is reacting as though this is the end of the world as we know it, and that somehow we are responsible. I'm going to illustrate for you how off-base that is. Think back to the last couple of weeks. Think back to all the legislation and all the meetings and all the negotiation and all the speeches and everything else that resulted in this debt ceiling compromise that we eventually got, that it was eventually uh, passed through both houses and signed into law by Barack Obama. Think of a very specific question. How much effect or what specifically did the Tea Party do in order to get that piece of legislation passed? How much influence did we have over that piece of legislation? Well, I would tell you that the answer to that question is little, if any. I mean, think about it. We in the Tea Party were trumpeting the idea that maybe we don't need to raise the debt ceiling. But yet, this piece of legislation raised the debt ceiling. So, we lost out on that one. Didn't have any effect there. Uh, we purported the idea that we should not be raising taxes at this time. And while some, on some would tell you that on paper, this compromise does not raise taxes, the fact of the matter is the, the super Congress, super commission, whatever you want to call them, that all this stuff got punted to, they will have the opportunity to raise taxes. So that is going to happen. So we lost out on that one too. And the other thing we said is we wanted to make, uh, make a, a lot of cuts in, in the federal government. Well, did that happen? Uh, well, they threw a number out there, like $2.7 trillion or so, but no one really said what the cuts were going to be, and it's all put into this commission, and no one really knows what's going to happen. So, in effect, no, we really didn't get that either, at least not in a meaningful way. So when it comes down to the piece of legislation that was eventually passed and signed, you know, the only real thing that actually occurred last week, it seems to me that the Tea Party was a bit player at best. We really had nothing to do with this monstrosity. Most of us hate it. I know John Boehner was out there saying he got 98% of what he wanted, but I can tell you as a Tea Party or a conservative, we didn't get 10% of what we wanted. So really, we didn't play much of a role in this. The only thing of the last couple of weeks that we really did play a role in, and that we really did accomplish, and it was an accomplishment only in the political sense, it was not not an accomplishment in the sense that it would have any direct impact on the debt ceiling or our financial crisis. The only thing the Tea Party really accomplished was that for once, for probably the first time in our adult lifetimes, we actually got Washington to sit down and have an adult conversation about fiscal responsibility. Okay, well that's no small feat, but at the end of the day it really didn't have much of an effect on the piece of legislation that was passed. But nevertheless, that is the one thing, I suppose, that we in the Tea Party can hang our hat on and say, well, that's what we accomplished. So, by David Axelrod's own reasoning, if he's laying the blame for this downgrade at the feet of the Tea Party, then what he must be telling you is that the credit rating was downgraded simply because Washington had an adult conversation about fiscal responsibility for the first time in damn near 100 years. 
Come on, you know that's ridiculous. But yet, if he's going to blame, if he's going to blame us for the downgrade, well, that conversation occurring was really the only thing that we did in this whole schmoz. So you can see how ridiculous that is, and how twisted that reasoning is. We didn't have anything to do with this downgrade. In fact, heck, we were told all along that if we didn't raise the debt ceiling, we would get downgraded. Guess what? The debt ceiling got raised, and we got downgraded. It's the people on your side that turned out to be lying about that, which we told you that you were all along. But all of the talk about Axelrod and blaming the Tea Party and all of this, as disgusting as that was, there was actually something else that came across the headlines this weekend and earlier this week that was even more disgusting in my estimation. I mentioned to you that Axelrod and Howard Dean and John Kerry and all these minions were out there blaming the Tea Party, which is true. But John Kerry ran off at the mouth a little bit more. John Kerry went a little bit further than some of the other people did. John Kerry gave us an insight into who these people on the left really are and what they really think. He made an appearance on the Morning Joe program on MSNBC on Monday morning. In the midst of blaming the Tea Party for uh, everything but the sun rising, he actually took the media to task for giving the Tea Party any kind of publicity or discussion or or for highlighting our viewpoints at all. It's kind of un-American for an ex-war hero, isn't it? Well, judge for yourself. Let's quote directly from what John Kerry said on the MSNBC program. Quoting from Kerry. And I have to tell you, I say this to you politely, the media in America has a bigger responsibility than it's exercising today. The media has got to begin to not give equal time or equal balance to an absolutely absurd notion just because somebody asserts it or simply because somebody says something which everybody knows is not factual. It doesn't deserve the same credit as a legitimate idea about what you do. And the problem is everything is put into this tit-for-tat equal battle and America is losing any sense of what's real of who's accountable, of who is not accountable, of who's real, who isn't, who's serious, who isn't. Wow. So basically John Kerry wants to repress political thought. Okay, he was pretty blunt about that. But you know what the most uh, the most delicious thing about this whole this whole statement is, the most ironic thing about this statement, the most hypocritical thing about this statement? If you go back to 2007, John Kerry was one of a myriad of left-wing politicians who were trumpeting the idea of having the FCC and the federal government reimpose the Fairness Doctrine. Now, some of you might be a little bit younger and you might not understand what the Fairness Doctrine was. Real briefly, this was, first of all, it was one of the most misnamed pieces of legislation we've ever had, but that being set aside. The Fairness Doctrine was a federal law that was in place for quite a while that mandated that TV stations, radio stations, etc. Uh, give equal time to both sides of an issue. So if uh, a Republican came on and talked about a particular issue, the station was bound by law to have a Democrat come on and give their side of the same issue. Uh, sounds like it was fair, but it really wasn't. All you had to do to get around it was throw a Democrat out there to give some you know, ridiculous thought on, on some subject. And then go get a Republican who was a moderate or, you know, back up to the, uh, until the 1970s, you could go get a liberal Republican, those things existed back then, uh, to go on there and debate the person. But really, they're saying the same thing. You never got any sort of conservative opinion out of that or conservative thoughts. So uh, the, the Fairness Doctrine really did not live up to his name, as, as most federal laws do not. But anyhow, Kerry wanted to bring that back. That law was struck down in 1987 as being unconstitutional, which it was. And, of course, that led to a, a great uh, new era in media where people could then have opinion shows where they could, uh, commentary shows and opinion shows where they could espouse their viewpoints and not have to give up half of their time to some dissenting viewpoint. So you had the Rush Limbaugh's and, and all of the different shows, and now you have the cable TV today I'm on both sides. And we have a great exchange of ideas in the open marketplace that we did not have 20-plus years ago. Yet... Kerry wanted to bring that back. He wanted to bring the Fairness Doctrine back. Kerry said, and I'm going to quote here from an article in Broadcasting and Cable from June 27, 2007, an article written by John Egerton. 
Carrie had made an uh, appearance on a radio show on WNYC called The Brian Lehrer Show, and he called the demise of the Fairness Doctrine one of the most profound changes in the balance of the media. And he said that conservatives have been able to, quote, squeeze down and squeeze out opinion of opposing views. I think it has been a very important transition in the imbalance of our public dialogue. Wait a second. So in 2007, John Kerry was upset that the Fairness Doctrine had been ruled unconstitutional and that in his mind, opposing viewpoints and opposing opinion had been squeezed down or squeezed out, to use his words, of the media. And yet, what? Two days ago, he's the same guys on NBC basically telling the media that they should squeeze down or squeeze out opposing viewpoints. What the funky chicken? Wow! I guess it just goes to show that John Kerry, or shall I say failed presidential candidate John Kerry, only wants absurd notions and illegitimate ideas stricken from the media when they are ideas that come from the other side. If they are absurd notions and illegitimate ideas that come from his side of the aisle, he wants those protected by law. He wants the radio stations, TV stations, etc. to be mandated to carry those. Oh, but they need to exercise their responsibility before carrying the ideas of the opposition or absurd ideas, as he calls them. Now, I don't even want to go into what makes John Kerry think that he has some sort of authority to decide what's absurd and what's legitimate in terms of political discourse. Setting that all aside, I think it shows a tremendous amount of hypocrisy and a tremendous amount of chutzpah. Let's be very clear. Kerry is basically saying on the MSNBC show that the media in America has a bigger responsibility than it's exercising today. I think that's where he's got it wrong. John Kerry, let me be very upfront with you. The media's responsibility is very simple, and it's the same responsibility that any other business has. The media's responsibility is to turn a profit, period. And to the effect that presently Tea Party ideas, Tea Party mentality, Tea Party viewpoints are at least interesting enough to enough American people, whether they agree with them or not, they're at least interesting enough that people will stop and listen to a news story or read a news story about them, and therefore it drives ratings, it sells advertising. For that reason, it very much should be in the media to report it. The media should report it because people are interested in talking about it, and therefore it gets ratings. That's the only responsibility the media has. They do not have a responsibility to prop up your tired and dead arguments that have failed for 70 years and that the American people are starting to see through. I know that you think of the media as your personal lapdog, and to a great extent they are. But the media also has to turn a profit. And slowly but surely, the marketplace is telling you that these absurd and illegitimate ideas are resonating with a lot of people. And that's what scares the hell out of you. Because people are no longer just deferring to what the liberals and the academics and the intelligentsia says. We're starting to realize the intelligentsia and the academics are, by and large, completely fucking wrong. And that drives you nuts. That's why you want to shut us down. That's why you don't want the media to report on us. That's why I'm sure if you could get your paws on the internet, you'd try and take a show like this right off the air. But it's not going to work. Because the American people are on to you, Mr. Kerry. We know what you're up to. We've seen you suppress legitimate thought for 75 years and replace it with the pablum that the liberals and the academics and the intelligentsia have put forth as legitimate thought which has only brought this country to the brink. You want to know why we're in the financial pickle that we're in right now, the cultural pickle that we're in right now? It's because of the crap that people like you have espoused for the better part of a century, virtually unopposed in the media, because you had, until 1987, 
a legally formed monopoly on it. That's what brought all this about. And it kills you that we're on to it. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.